All right. Welcome back to Close Enough Garage. We're on round two of this because I tried this video once. I talked way too much, way too slowly, and it cut off halfway through and said the maximum file size has been exceeded. I'm still new to this YouTube stuff. So we're going to get right into it. Got a break in the weather today. It's up to 19 degrees, so I'm going to take this opportunity to teach you about batteries, uh, specifically a type that you might have been leery about or you might have not tried before. So for starters, we have your basic AGM battery. This is a Duralast Gold. You can get it at the Red and White store. Uh, I believe I spent about 140 bucks on this. It's a basic 200 cold crank amp. Probably the most common battery size physically for motorcycles. AGM is an absorbed gas mat. It's basically an improvement to the old refillable lead acid batteries. Um, Non-spillable, of course, you can mount them on their side. You can do a lot of cool things with them. But what we're here talking about today is lithium. Specifically, LifePo 4. Uh, this would be a lithium ferride phosphate, if I'm correct, I think. It doesn't care what language you speak. It's going to work, okay? And the reason being, you're looking at 200 cold cranking amps and a ton of weight. That, feel that pulling on the scar tissue through my arm, just, uh, just picking that thing up there. This thing, well, it doesn't really weigh much of anything. Maybe a pound? Takes up the same physical footprint, width and depth. It's about half the height. The battery actually only comes up to about here. The rest is all a computer, and that's a lot of what we're going to talk about here because that's where a lot of these myths are. Now, we used to race radio control cars a dozen or, up until a dozen or so years ago, and dude, the lithium fear was real because these things, if you looked at them the wrong way, they'd explode into a ball of fire. And you hear a lot of the horror stories, too, from these dudes online, like, well, I'll never run it, the bike won't charge it right, the bike's not meant for it. I had a buddy that had one 10 years ago, and it caught his whole garage on fire. And you know what, that's, that's cool, because the fire thing might have been true a dozen years ago, but this technology does hit different. This computer here will not let it overcharge. It will not let it do anything it's not supposed to. The battery chemistry itself is actually a lot safer. The, the uh, lithium uh, ferride phosphate does not catch fire. You can stab it, you can shoot it, you can run a spike right through it right now, and nothing bad's going to happen to that battery. So, the other issue is uh, the, the charging system. Well, your bike's charging system doesn't know. Okay, it's got a stator, and it's got a re rectifier regulator. Now, back in the day, the rec and reg were two different parts, but today they're combined into one unit. And what all that is, is the stator generates the alternating field that generates the charge current to push it into your regulator rectifier, which then feeds into your battery and charges that, and then your whole bike system runs off of that battery, typically. Um, the, alt or the stator does not care if you're running a canopic jar battery full of lemon juice or if you're pulling something from a spaceship you found in the year 3000 and brought back to now. Why you would come back to now makes me scared for our future, but that's neither here nor there. I'm trying to rush so this video doesn't shut off on me again. Um, the point is, all that stator does is it supplies the charge field. If your stator's healthy and it can charge a regular AGM, it can do a lithium. Your rectifier takes that AC current, that alternating current from the stator, and it turns it into a DC direct current that your battery can use. Um, beyond that, your regulator limits the charge input, and it will not let your system charge on a healthy regulator over 13.8 uh, volts max for a 14.4 volts running charge, typically. What that translates to is your bike doesn't give a shit what battery you put in it, so stop believing the myths. 
Uh, let me light my talking stick here and we're going to continue. Now, I mentioned the size and weight difference. This is one that runs my air ride bike. It runs the whole air ride system, the ignition, the lights, everything on that bike. This is what was originally in it. And, you know, unless you're running a race bike, I guess those extra 10 pounds you save aren't going to be a big deal. But what is cool is you can secure these with 15 pound Velcro and they're not going to go anywhere. This battery itself actually survived one hell of a nasty front end impact. Not at fault. I can't get into it though. But it survived it. It never shifted once. And it's been running my air ride ever since. This one, a little bit bigger. I'm going to see what that does when I put it in the VTX pretty soon. Um, another thing is price point. As I mentioned, I paid somewhere around, I think, 140 bucks for this Duralast Gold here. This is $72 on Amazon. Uh, 200 cranking amps, 300 amps. So, you're actually getting a better battery for a lower price. You're getting more amps, less size, less weight, better technology, just as safe or safer than the AGM because these actually have a higher operating range. Um, everything I've checked on AGM is telling me about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. These are listed at the manufacturer to go 140 degrees Fahrenheit max or negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit minimum. And if you're riding outside of those parameters, I bow to you. But the point is... Similar output, similar job, just it's better technology all around, in my opinion. And I'm going to use those words right now to save my ass from the people that jump in like, well, no, this is better because of that. No, I, I don't really care. This is what I think. This is what I have from experience. And this is what I know. I just, I greatly prefer them. And you can also run more systems off of them. You have more amps so you're looking at being able to run your cold weather gear your heated gloves your heated grips your heated jacket your show gear your air ride system once again this little tiny guy does all that it runs a compressor on a tankless system while running the bike and it doesn't even dim the headlight you can run your underglow uh whatever you can think of your radio you're pretty much good to go with these so Hopefully, I've been able to dispel some of the myths about lithium. They're, uh, they're a lot safer. Give them a try. Do your research. Check the technology out. There's a reason why I prefer things over other things, and I've been doing this for a long time. So, that being said, hopefully we made it through this video without it cutting off. I hate doing multiple takes and editing cuts and all that shit, so... I know. I just said that I hate doing cuts and takes and all that other stuff, but we're back here. We're on my kitchen counter because I did forget a couple of important things. Looking at your amp hours here. 12. 5. That might seem wor worrisome. Doesn't matter. 3.5 amp hours. The reason being, these never run at full duty cycle. You're not going to get that. That 12 amp hours, you might be seeing 5, 6, 7 amp hours on it, depending on the battery. And your bike's not using all that. You're going to have to be maxed out before you're even reaching that point. So, these will do the job just fine. As I said, this little guy right here has been running a whole motorcycle, air ride system, and all that other shit, GPS locator, everything else absolutely fine no issues the only place you're going to find major issues with that is if you're doing a lot of starting the bike riding it 30 seconds then shutting it off you should at least anyway be giving your bike full time to charge and uh, full time to uh, warm up and get all its systems going so you're already doing yourself a disservice if you're at that point uh, another thing i wanted to note is Another cool feature, these lithiums, charge indicators. 
I haven't touched this one in about three months. It's still reading at 90%. They never actually reach full. And then finally, these get your AGM down to around 12.3 volts, and it's considered dead. You get it lower or keep it too low for too long, you're going to kill cells in that battery. These, my dumbass left my uh, air ride system on dump at one point this past year. Dropped this battery down to 0.3 volts. I thought it was toast. It took about an hour and a half on the charger and I was actually able to bring it back up to 13.4 volts and it's been working fine ever since. You will never do that with your AGM battery. And finally, Another cool feature, I don't have them on these, but they do have the lithium ferrite batteries with a jump start feature. So if your battery ever does get too low to start your bike and you're stranded because you left something on or you left your underglow on for too long outside the bar or whatever else, they will actually have another button on there. That will supply enough of a jolt of power to act as a jump box and fire your bike off one time to get that charging system going and get your juice back into your battery. Big cuts and all that shit, so I'm going to leave you with, uh, be safe out there. Those people on four wheels do not care about you, and you got people that love you. Take care. Thanks for sign or checking in, and uh, of course, like, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your pastor, tell your teachers, all that. Y'all have a good one.